Hello, um, my name's Arissa and I'm one of the chemistry teachers with Lantana. Um, today we're looking at the first HL subtopic within acids and bases, 18.1. This subtopic is primarily concerned with Lewis acids and bases. So let's get started. Really quickly though, before we get started, I think it might be worth going through um, a pinch of SL really quickly. So if we look at Bronsted-Lowry theory for a moment. So Bronsted-Lowry theory is how we define acids and bases based on proton transfer. So if you remember from our earlier videos, uh, an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. Good. All right. So Lewis theory is a little bit more broad in that case. It's all about the transfer now of an electron pair. So if we define an acid first, so an acid is going to be a lone pair acceptor, while a base is going to be a lone pair donor. So therefore, Lewis acids, in order to be able to accept a lone pair of electrons, so they have to be, whoops, they have to be positively charged. And they also need to have an empty orbital that can accept the incoming lone pair of electrons. Bases, on the other hand, since they have a lone pair to donate, they are going to be negatively charged as they have the lone pair. Good, so they're going to be negatively charged. And as the base is going to give the lone pair to the acid, what we're going to get is we're going to get the formation of a coordinate bond. So a coordinate bond is a type of covalent bond whereby one species is responsible for both of the electrons in the bond. So here both of the electrons are going to come from the base and they're going to get transferred over to the acid. If you remember from our earlier video, um, we came across the term amphoteric as well. So a species that is amphoteric is going to be able to act both as a Lewis acid and as a Lewis base. And the main example that you have from the IB is aluminium oxide. So aluminium oxide is an example of something that can accept lone pairs of electrons and also give lone pairs of electrons. Good. Okay. So there are three main examples of Lewis acid and base theory that you need to be aware of for your exams. So the first one is electron deficient compounds. So this is from bonding. The second one is complex ions. So this is from higher level periodicity. And last but not least, nucleophilic and electrophilic substitution, which is from higher level organic chemistry. So we're going to look at each of these in turn. So starting off with electron deficient compounds. So a little bit of a throwback first to topic three. So always remember that the two examples of electron deficient compounds that you're expected to be aware of are boron trifluoride, so BF3, and beryllium chloride, BeCl2. The reason we call both of these electron deficient compounds is because they have a valency, oops, that's not very nicely written, is it? They have a valency of less than eight. So they've got less than eight electrons in their outer shell. So therefore, because BF3 has less than eight electrons in its outer shell, it can accept a lone pair of electrons coming in. So since BF3 is a lone pair acceptor, it's going to act as a Lewis acid. And the main example that we use is BF3 receiving a lone pair from NH3, which is ammonia. And here we say that ammonia acts as an adduct because it adds on to BF3, essentially. That's sort of how I think about it. So in this case, ammonia is going to be acting as your 
a lone pair donor, making it your Lewis base. And as you can see, this bond over here, this is going to be your coordinate bond. Usually when we um, write this down, we usually draw it as like an arrow to show the movement of the lone pair from NH3 to BF3. So that's your first example. Next up, complex ions. So what is a complex ion? So a complex ion is when we have a central metal ion, usually a transition metal such as iron over here, that is surrounded by ligands. So a ligand is anything that has a lone pair of electrons. So the ligand donates its lone pairs and therefore you get the formation of coordinate bonds. So you can see those arrows now. So these are all your coordinate bonds. Perfect. So that's going to be your complex ion. Let's talk about what's going to be the Lewis acid and the Lewis base now. So the Lewis acid in this example is going to be your lone pair acceptor and therefore it's going to be iron or your central metal ion and your Lewis base is going to be your electron pair donor and then therefore this is going to be the ligands in this case H2O. All right perfect let's move on to the last example certainly not the least. Um, okay, nucleophiles and electrophiles. So we're going to be looking at nucleophilic and electrophilic substitution. And I kind of want us to talk about these words for a minute because they really help us kind of ground our understanding. So if something is a file, that means it likes something. Um, so if you're a liberophile, you like books um, and so on and so forth. So if something is a nucleophile, this means that it's attracted to the nucleus. The nucleus is positively charged, right? That's where your protons are. And therefore, a nucleophile, in order to be attracted to the nucleus, is going to be negatively charged. So it's going to be negatively charged or it's going to have a lone pair of electrons. So what we can see here is an example of nucleophilic substitution. You've got your incoming nucleophile here. So remember, this is going to be negatively charged. So either delta negative or just a negative. And it's going to be attracted to a delta positive um, atom. So over here, carbon is going to be delta positive. And so therefore, the nucleophile is going to donate its lone pair of electrons to form a bond. So over here, you can see that it's substituted bromine, and therefore it's bonded in. So that's why we call it nucleophilic substitution. So over here, because our nucleophile has donated it, its lone pair of electrons, it's going to act as a Lewis base because it's acted as a, an electron pair donor. Now let's look at the next example. So electrophilic substitution. So let's talk about the meaning of the word electrophile. So now it's a file, which means it likes electrons. So we know that it's attracted to electrons. And therefore, what that means is that this one is going to be positively charged. Good, and that's sort of what we can see here, right? So this is your electrophile. So your electrophile is receiving a lone pair of electrons. It's an electron pair acceptor, and therefore it's your Lewis acid. Good. So in organic chemistry, um, we use these curly arrows to show the movement of electrons. So here it's really clear that the electrons have moved from uh, benzene, this aromatic ring that's really electron rich, over to your electrophile, which has now received that lone pair of electrons. Good. So nucleophiles act as Lewis bases, electrophiles act as Lewis acids. Let's put this into a bit of practice then. So which statements are correct? 
Lewis bases can act as nucleophiles. So we saw here that nucleophiles are Lewis bases, and so that first answer is definitely correct. Electrophiles are Lewis acids. Oh, whoopsies. We saw here that that's also the case, so that second statement, whoops, that second statement is also correct. And last but not least, Lewis acids are electron pair acceptors. By definition, that is also correct. And so our answer here is going to be D. So it's well worth being really familiar with the three examples, right? So uh, electron deficient compounds, complex ions, and electrophiles and nucleophiles. Last but not least, um, a little bit of a paper two question for you. So write an equation to show how ammonia um, can act as a bronsted lowry base and as a Lewis base. So let's do the Lewis base first. So the easiest example of ammonia acting as a Lewis base is when we saw it acting as an adduct earlier with BF3. So I'm going to write down my equation as NH3 plus BF3. Three, and that's going to give me ammonium boron trifluoride. Notice that I've put the N beside the B, and the reason I've done that is because the actual lone pair of electrons comes from the nitrogen, and so the bond is formed between the nitrogen and the boron. That's why I've put them side by side. Okay, let's look at the next one then. So Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor. And so the simplest reaction that I can write out is NH3 accepting a proton to become NH4 plus. And that's kind of the easiest way to work that question. And let's have a look at the mark scheme. So that's pretty much what the IV was looking for. This second one is a little bit trickier, and that's why it's well worth being familiar with those three examples as well. So there have been other things that the IV accepts as well. And notice here that they're also accepting um, ammonia uh, acting as a ligand. And um, so from one of the other three examples there, so this one would be from complex ions. Perfect. So thank you so much for joining us for um, this video on 18.1. As always, do visit our website if you're looking for private tuition or if you'd like to find out more about our revision courses. And um, I'll see you for 18.2. Bye.